It's January 19th, 2026, and we have some cold and snow to talk about today. This Arctic blast we have ahead of us this weekend looks epic. The Weather Prediction Center has already put much of the central to the eastern U.S. under a hazardous cold outlook. And with this major cold blast, we could see a major winter storm down here as we get into this weekend. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And of course, if you like the video, like the video. Let's get into the weather updates. We have an absolutely wild forecast ahead of us. But first, as I always like to, let's take a look at our live radar real quick. We've got some snow showers flying through portions of eastern Colorado and western Kansas. We also have that lake effect snow still pumping over portions of western Michigan, upstate New York here. You've got some flurries moving through Ohio, western to central PA, and then some snow moving through coastal New England. As you can see, we still have those winter storm warnings through portions of the UP of Michigan, western Michigan, and portions of upstate New York, including the Watertown area, and then Buffalo stretching down to the PA border. So imagine we had temperature anomalies that look like this this weekend widespread 20 to 30 plus degrees below average during the coldest week historically in the northern hemisphere the third and the fourth week of january well guess what it's looking like this is what's going to happen i'm going to get to these anomalies in a second first let's go over our seven to ten day forecast we currently have some ridging out west so dry air and warmer conditions out west but we've got this nice amplified trough pushing into the east as we move into tuesday not much precipitation but you're starting to get a clipper system moving in through the northern rockies northern plains let's push through tuesday into tuesday night wednesday morning clipper system begins to move through portions of minnesota wisconsin iowa the upper midwest and then eventually through the great lake regions and off the coast and we may have another clipper system right behind it let's push through wednesday and into thursday we've got some more snow trying to trail in behind this and you can start to see we're starting to get some moisture trying to funnel in off the gulf here and our polar jet is going to begin to collapse a little bit farther to the south overall though to start this week, at least through the first three to four days, pretty dry, above average temperatures out west and very cold below average temperatures out east. But things start to get a little crazy as we get into Friday. Here we go, getting into Friday afternoon. Suddenly we have some moisture moving in off the Pacific. We have some moisture moving in off the Gulf. Our polar jet is collapsed down into the Southern Plains and we start to get a nice bear clinic boundary. Snow begins to form up to the north, ice in the middle. We've got some rain, probably very cold rain down to the south. We begin to move into Saturday and suddenly we have a major ice storm on our hands. I'm hoping it's not this bad, but most models do agree there's going to be some sort of ice storm here. Now we have potentially snow stretching from DC, Baltimore. I'm talking the mid Atlantic all the way out through the central and southern Rockies. You have an ice storm from western Texas out through North Carolina. This is a major winter storm that's beginning to form along this boundary. And then we push through Saturday into Sunday and the system begins to move out to the east. Now we're getting towards 140 hours out. There is the possibility, I think, that this system actually tries to go a little bit further north and maybe drop a lot of snow from DC see all the way up through Boston, through this mid-Atlantic or the I-95 corridor. But some models like the Canadian model and the GFS actually try to bring this snowstorm even further south, putting snow into places like potentially Charlotte, Atlanta, Georgia, Huntsville, Alabama. So of course, at this range, if we're talking about over 100 hours, over 120 hours, the exact path of this precipitation, how much rain, ice, and snow is going to fall on a localized level, we don't know that yet. But all of our globals, including our AI models, are seeing this winter storm forming. They are agreeing on these freezing temperatures trying to push south towards the Gulf, towards the Atlantic. So the confidence in a system like this is very, very high right now. How intense will this winter storm be? How amplified will this trough be? Obviously, we still have some questions there, but I do expect this winter storm to begin to get itself together down in the Southern Plains as we get into this Friday. About five to six days out, where does the European model see some good snow? Northern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. You can see through the Ohio Valley here, some good snow potentially through central to northern North Carolina, Virginia, the mid-Atlantic region. Again, the GFS and Canadian are gonna see this a little bit differently, but we're talking about a foot plus of snow through this region here. The GFS pushes this snow a little bit farther south as we get out towards the southeast. You can see the snow through portions of northern Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, some good snow into Charlotte, out towards the Carolina coast. And then the Canadian gets real aggressive with the snow. You can see putting snow down all the way as far south as central Texas, northern Louisiana, almost central Mississippi, central Alabama, maybe Atlanta, Georgia, and then into upstate South Carolina. The Canadian obviously shifts that snow line farther to the south. But this is what I'm talking about here, and I talked about it in my last video. The AI models actually want to bring the snow a little bit farther to the north. The graphcast also saw the snow a little bit farther to the north, which would be obviously a great day for coastal New England and coastal mid-Atlantic. And the thing about this is, if this were to happen, I'm not expecting you guys to have any mixing issues. This snow would be moving through while we have extremely below average temperatures. It would be plenty cold up here for snow to be falling from start to finish as this winter storm moves through. Right now, I am favoring 
the southern track because I do have much more confidence in this cold air really pushing south and you're going to get a lot of the snow forming like I said along that bear clinic boundary where you have those temperatures really you know in that 26 to 34 range that's when you can begin to produce some very heavy snow and I just think actually this far north the struggle might be you may be too cold I know this looks ridiculous and unrealistic although we probably are going to see something like this. These are the temperature anomalies from the latest Euro. And we're only looking at about 120 hours here. And trying to forecast local precipitation 120 hours out is pretty difficult. Temperatures though, it's not that difficult to get somewhat close five to seven days out, at least know who's going to see well below average or well above average temperatures. So you can see right now we're obviously below average. Now, when do things start to get really wacky as we get into Thursday? And as we get into Friday, we're talking 20 to 30 plus degrees below average, some areas 40 plus degrees below average. We're talking the plains all the way out towards the East Coast. And this is through Friday. Saturday, Sunday, look at these temperature anomalies down in Southern Texas. Houston could see temperatures 30 plus degrees below average. Actual temperatures down in Houston would likely get below freezing and wind chills would be even crazier, probably into the teens. Now moving into next Monday, still cold. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is an extended period of well below average temperatures. It's already impressive how below average these temperatures are supposed to be, but it's even more impressive how long these well below average temperatures want to stick around. Here's what the rest of January could look like. If you're in the plains or out east, you could be 10 to 15 degrees below average if you were to average up the rest of the days left in January here. And this may linger a little bit into February. So what could these actual temperatures look like? Well, let's move a little bit ahead here. Obviously, we're getting cold into the upper Midwest over the next few days, but I want to get to the interest interesting part here as we get into Thursday, Friday. Now these are actual temperatures. You can see up here in Minnesota, they, these aren't wind chills. We're getting down into the negative 30s, negative 20s. Already right here, Chicago negative 14. Again, these are not wind chills. Pushing forward, into Friday and Saturday, you can see those negative temperatures trying to push down south, almost in Oklahoma and northern Arkansas, still not wind chills. And you can see right here, we're getting into the negatives in Oklahoma, Arkansas, southern Missouri. Again, still not wind chills. Let me show you what these wind chills could look like. Now we're talking about negative 16 in Tulsa, negative 13 in Oklahoma City, negative 16 in St. Louis, negative 2 in Little Rock, trying to get down into the negatives in Dallas. And you can see what's happening up to the north. We see some negative 50s showing up here in northern Minnesota, and we're getting close to negative 40 to negative 45 degrees in the Twin Cities. This cold air is moving out toward Chicago as well, potentially pushing negative 30, negative 35 degrees here on the latest Euro. Getting into Sunday morning, how cold could our temperatures be? Well, wind chill in Dallas, maybe still in the negatives. The entire state of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Little Rock, negative 12 degree wind chill, Nashville, negative 10 degree wind chill. And we're in the negatives with wind chill through portions of Alabama, Mississippi, and maybe even northern Louisiana. And this cold air is going to be moving out east too. Negative 12 degree wind chill in New York City, negative 5 Philadelphia, negative 11 Boston. You can really see this cold air beginning to make its way out towards the coast here. Here's our 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, and you rarely see this dark of blues. This is the target up here, obviously. The Midwest, the Great Lakes region, portions of the Mid-Atlantic and New England, absolute Arctic air takeover. Getting into the 8 to 14 day, still freezing out east and warm out west. Three to four week, some more of the same. If you're still unsure of how cold this is actually going to be, well, the Weather Prediction Center has put this entire region under a risk for hazardous cold. It's not every day you see a hazardous cold risk stretching down into portions of northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. And I do think this hazardous cold outlook may even shift farther out to the east. There's not really much to talk about when it comes to our teleconnections. Our Arctic oscillation is extremely negative. The Euro AI, the GraphCast, the European, the GFS. Look at our NAO mean. Negative, negative, negative. What does all this mean if you don't know what teleconnections are? This is just a sign of tons of cold air and maybe some good snow for the south and for the east as well. Extremely negative EPO, which is what's sending all of that cold air downstream into the states. And then a very negative WPO, high latitude blocking. This is just an absolutely wild setup. And if it weren't crazy enough, the latest updated MJO forecast wants to put us into a slightly to moderately amplified phase eight, into phase one, into phase two, starting basically the 25th of January. So five or six days all the way through the mid part of February. Phase eight, phase one, phase two is extremely cold for the states, especially the east, but the west gets in on that cold as well. And this can also bring us some enhanced moisture. So once again, just a crazy forecast, a crazy outlook ahead. Last but not least, I did just want to quickly show you the expected snowfall from the National Weather Service over the next 72 hours, one to four inches up here through portions of eastern Montana, North Dakota, northeastern South Dakota. Maybe we get another few inches 
another couple inches through portions of central to southern Minnesota here, northeastern Iowa. Not much to talk about here. Obviously expect it one to three as we get into or one to four as we get into Wisconsin, maybe a little bit more for Chicago. The real concern right now is western Michigan, the UP of Michigan. We could still see a lot of snow. And on the high end, this is even crazier. Buffalo, Watertown, upstate New York, obviously still with all this cold air coming in. Lake effect snow is still going to be pumping. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And like I said, if you like the video, like the video. I try to post content like this every day and live stream every day to answer all of your weather related questions. I also run an awesome weather discord. If you want to become a member of the climate crew, the link to my discord is in the description of all of my YouTube videos. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or in the live stream today.